Hello, my name is Juri. I have a master's degree in psychology from Aarhus University in Denmark. So um, I have studied psychology at the university and I've read a lot of articles. This is one of the articles we read and I think it's an article that still a lot of people read because when you want to know what the hell is intelligence then this is uh, probably an article you know about, you have heard about it, um, definitely heard about it. And uh, you probably have read it because a lot of people have actually re read this article and still do. Um, let me just explain what it is. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, it was written in 1996, but uh, a lot of this still makes sense. Some of it is maybe a bit outdated. But it's still an article you can read and um, um, understand a lot from. And they also didn't include some uh, knowledge that we have, uh, we have had or we have learned since this, uh, this year. So uh, 21 years have passed and we have some additional knowledge about intelligence. And I will um, explain a bit about that. But I'll try to keep it short and simple because I, have, I could talk about this article for hours and hours, probably three hours easily. Um, so, um, the bell curve was released in 1994. The bell curve was a book by uh, Einstein and Murray. I really like Murray. Um, he's a very, very intelligent person and writes a lot of great books. So it was about intelligence and uh, the nature of intelligence and stuff like that. A lot of great science was in the book and actually this article agrees on 99% of what they say in the book. The problem is, uh, I think it was the last chapter that ended with uh, political um, ideas. So what can we do about it? What can we do about the low intelligence people coming into a country um, and not being able to attend university or, um, or produce resources for this country? That's a problem and they try to answer it. And that's a no-no, big no-no in academic science. Of course, you can do it in books. So that's why um, BSA and APA, they uh, created a, this super team of researchers. And some researchers are not that super, but uh, I really like Thomas L. J. Bouchard. He's a top, top level scientist. So they created this team to kind of answer the question of what is intelligence and what do we know about it and what don't we know about intelligence? So um, usually when the public uh, talks about intelligence, they, um, they are talking about different kind of stuff. So they are talking about charm or they are talking about the sport abilities and other kind of different stuff. When researchers talk about intelligence, we mostly talk about G-factor because that's what we know about, that's what we can uh, investigate. And that's also what they say, hey, we have tried to uh, do some research and uh, we all agree that uh, G-factor is a thing and we can actually measure it. And so these, are from, these people are from different political convictions and from this different universities. And they all agree that G-factor is actually a measurable concept. So we say, okay, we have the G-factor and it correlates with grades and job ability later in life. It actually predicts uh, your grades later in life. But we also have these different kind of concepts of intelligence that we cannot measure. So we think they could be there, maybe they're not there, maybe G-factor is all there is to intelligence. But um, right now it's all we know about. So you can use Raven's um, test, or you can use Weschler or Stanford Binet. Raven's is only nonverbal stuff. You can also test intelligence by vocabulary test. Again, you're only getting this G factor. So you're getting the IQ, and that's what um, they call intelligence, or generalized abstract reasoning ability or mental energy. So it's something that can predict how well you do in school. It's something that can predict your wage later in life. It's something that can predict your job status. So if I give uh, kids these tests, I just give them a 40 minute test or even 20 minute test, then I can predict what kind of job they will have later in life, right? Okay, will you uh, become, will you uh, complete a university degree? Yeah, I can pretty much predict it by these kind of tests. 
at least on a societal basis or group basis. Um, and at the, as they write here, the critics do not dispute uh, their ability, the stability of test scores. So they say that the critics do not dispute G factor. We know it's real, we know it's uh, an intelligence. But what we are talking about is are there more to intelligence than just G factor or IQ? Is there something else to it? Um, and so far, we haven't been able to find it, as they say, but there could be more to it. Uh, for example, Gardner's theory of intelligence, that's a multiple intelligence theory. Uh, as they say, it's still used among educators and psychologists, but um, we don't actually have any scientific proof of it being valid. We just know there's correlation with G-factor um, um, with this multiple intelligence. So when you say you can have a mad intelligence or verbal intelligence, with G factor, you, you find a huge correlation between these two intelligences. So we say it's the same thing, basically. It's G, G factor making you good at maths, making you good at the verbal ability. Um, and then they also have some other theories, Steinberg's theory. I don't know that much about it. I have been very critical uh, of this theory, so that's why I marked it with orange. Orange is where, when I'm critical, and yellow is when I think they say something that's very, very interesting and it's a factual um, observation. So they say that, okay, maybe there's some other kind of intelligence that you can use to figure out other kind of stuff, but it's kind of big and they don't really explain it at all. Let's see. Oh, they also tried to uh, use this article to kind of disprove um, the bell curve's assumption that different races with different intelligences uh, so for example black people and white people have different kind of intelligences because of uh, heritability or genes they say it could be something else but they at the end they conclude that okay we don't know actually where these effects are coming from so they're trying to disprove this concept of racial differences in intelligence um, but they don't quite achieve it and you can see that they don't quite use um, good science to disprove the concept of uh, heritability and racial intelligence. They also say something about, uh, for example, you can measure intelligence by if kids can compare how much water is in a glass and I pour it in another glass, if there's the same amount of water, can I see that or can I not see that? Uh, the better you are able to see that, the, the better you, the higher your IQ is, so uh, stuff like that. And also uh, they explain Vygotsky's theory, again this is not a scientific concept, but I say a lot of scientists are still um, using this uh, Vygotsky theory. So a lot of scientists, or at least some uh, philosophers are still using these kind of old concepts, but we have not, no proof of them being true or not and biological approaches, but this is a really old article. So for example, they say, uh, we should be open to the possibility that our understanding of intelligence in the future will be rather different from what it is today. Uh, 21 years have passed and we have exactly the same understanding of intelligence, uh, but today we have more proof and more uh, biological, genetical proof. We have a lot more scientific studies and data that supports all these concepts that, uh, of G-factor that G-Factor actually does predict school grades and predict your job status later in life. And here they uh, shortly describe what R is. So R0 is 0%, R1 is, um, is 100%. They, yeah, they, you, you need to read this yourself to understand it. Um, stability of intelligence. Okay, all these scientists agree that intelligence is a very stable trait, but in childhood is not that stable. So in childhood you can influence intelligence one way or the other, right? At least you can, if you, um, if you collect a group of very young people, like let's say they're six years old, then you can train them very, very hard and their intelligence will rise for a bit, like let's say five IQ points. But then in uh, two years time, their intelligence will fall again to the median level. 
So uh, you cannot improve intelligence long term, but you can improve it very, very short term in childhood. So um, that's why when you look at intelligence studies, you need to look at the age of the individuals because if you read an intelligence study if, and it's uh, 13 year old individuals, then you know that, okay, intelligence is not um, fully stable yet and there can be some environmental effects on it. But when you're an adult, then it's uh, mostly heritable or just random uh, effects. So uh, you cannot influence intelligence one way or the other on purpose with ad uh, on adults. Yeah, general factor is the general G. So they, uh, at, they again and again talk about G factor because that's where we have data uh, and that's where we, where we know something about intelligence. And again, they say here correlation between IQ scores and grades are 0, 50 and that's 25%. Um, so that's a huge predictability power. If I test your IQ, I can predict your grades. And now that we know intelligence is heritable, we also pretty much in the future, we could predict your grades from when you're born, just do some DNA testing. What else do I say? Oh, I have a lot of orange. That means I was uh, all these things are kind of disproven. For example, let's say children in Japan and China get high math scores, but in reality, they also have a higher IQ on average. That's also something they support. So I don't know where they're going with this. Um, yeah, they do have, maybe they have a bit higher math scores than we can predict from their IQ scores. But they should, they should have higher wages in Western society than white people. And they also do, they have much higher wages than white people. For example, you go to USA, it's not something that's found in this article, but if you go to USA and you test, different groups of people. The black people will have the lower wages. Uh, Latin Americans will have um, lower wages than white people. White people have will have high wages. And these Japanese um, and Chinese people or Korean people, Orientals, they will have very, very high wages. That's something we can predict from IQ. So we can test the uh, small children and then we can pretty much, at, at a group basis, we can predict where they will end up in life. And total years of education, again, IQ can predict total years of education and that's 30% outcome variance. So that's a huge predictability power in, the, in psychology studies. Usually we find very, very small percentage. So uh, test scores are the best single predictors of individuals' years of education. They kind of try to disprove it a bit, but with philosophy, but at least they end up saying something that's true. So I like that. And the uh, correlation between uh, parental social economic status, so parental economy and how much they earn and intelligence, there's a close relation with that. At least a um, fairly close relation with these two factors. So you have a high IQ, you're not up in a higher wage and um, you also get high IQ uh, children because they will have your genes. It's not something they explain that much about because this is uh, an article they all had to agree on. Um, even the people who uh, kind of dislike the concept of G factor and intelligence. But it's something we have found out uh, since this study because 21 years have passed. So we have extra information, extra data that proves all this, at least shows that it's very, 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 very likely. Hmm. What social status, yes, also correlates with IQ. Oh yeah, if you have the same family with the same father, the high IQ brother will uh, end up with higher grades and a higher income and the low IQ brother will end up with a lower wage and a, and a, and also lower grades. That's also an effect we have found. 
and they all they, I can see that it's written by a lot of different people because all this um, orange stuff it's pretty much without any sources but it's also it's always adding stuff like we should always look at the environmental effect the environmental effect could have a say so it's also always could 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 maybe possibly again job performance of course if you have a high iq on average you will uh, have much higher job performance as you see here 29 percent variance of job performance and that's for for all the jobs they tested um, so it, it, there can be a difference between what job you do for example if you just move stuff around then maybe um, a high IQ would not make you that much more effective but if you use computers if you are using your intelligence to calculate different stuff then of course there's a relation between uh, your IQ that you're born with and your job performance will be much much higher and this always on groups basis not individual basis that's something also that we, we kind of know but it's not something they write that much about they just say okay there's a relationship uh, we just know it's there um, yeah intelligence and crime of course negatively correlated so if you're more intelligent um, you have less possibility of doing crime but the correlation is not huge again it's group basis oh this is actually very interesting because besides you know you probably taken an intelligence test right online when you kind of have to answer okay what figure comes next in line or you can even take a verbal test or word test stuff like that but you can also take a reaction time test did you know that you're gonna have a machine where you push a button so a button lines up and you have to kind of be as fast as possible and click the right button and that's call rates with intelligence you can read about it here it's um, yeah it's super super simple test and the reaction time is uh, highly highly correlated with your IQ also you can have inspection time for example you see two vertical lines on a screen and the last time you need to look at it and then know what line is longer the high IQ you have so if if people need a lot of time to differentiate between the lines then they have a lower IQ that again correlates with g-factor and that's the g-factor is uh, the factor that makes you intelligent in in all kind of fields verbal intelligence maths stuff like that yeah that's super interesting let's see neural efficiency of the brain that's also a great description of g-factor it's something that makes you think faster something that makes you solve problem faster something that may also makes you able to solve more complicated problems in your brain but that's as close as we can come to a description of intelligence genes and intelligence of course we know a lot more about it uh, right now today that's also something i've also explained before that we have so many new studies on intelligence that we can for example since this article came out we also know that high iq also uh, correlates very highly with uh, higher mental health so and higher physical health so higher iq individuals will be more healthier physically and uh, mentally that's also something we have uh, discovered since then but it's something they kind of should have known back then too oh yeah vocal vocabulary size so the size of the words you know the amount of words you know it's also highly correlated with intelligence again it's something you learn right so it's something that comes from outside but it's also something that you learn it's not something that's forced on you you learn the words you know and they are highly correlated with intelligence so that's what we also can predict with intelligence if we test two parents and they have a high intelligence then we can predict that that child will probably learn a lot of words even if they never see the child even if they just um, 
adopt the child to to a village in Russia, China, and stuff like that. Even then, it has predictability power. But we still don't know um, how the genes combine together to form an intelligent brain. It's something we need to study a lot closer. And certainly it's something, uh, something they didn't know back then. We don't even know about it today. Uh, again, monozygotic twins and diazygotic twins. And adoption studies, as I said, um, you can have twins from different races, you can have twins with different kind of intelligence of parents. And what we find from these kind of studies is that uh, if intelligence, if intelligent parents have a child, that child will be intelligent. It doesn't matter where he grows up. So it doesn't matter if he grows up at home or not. And if uh, low intelligent parents have a child and he is uh, adopted by very high intelligent parents, then he will have a low intelligence. So these parents will have minimal amount of influence on the child, no matter where they are or how they are. So we know there's heritability and we know that besides heritability, there's like a magical effect on intelligence. We don't know where it comes from. We just don't know. We just know that it's some, not something we can influence directly. It comes from the air. And uh, as they say in this article too, that the family influence is very, very low on negligent. So it's nearly non-existent. Mm. Yes. Oh yeah, that's what I say. Older persons are in a better position to select their own effective environments, a form of genotype environment correlation. Again, you grow older, you're better at selecting your environment, right? You're better at selecting what you need to learn and what you can learn. And that's why when, when you grow older, um, your adoptive parents' intelligence and your intelligence will not correlate at all. But when you're a small child, like six years old, then there will be a correlation between your adoptive parents and your intelligence. Let's see. Oh yeah, Flynn effect. That's very interesting because uh, even though we know that G factor is very, very stable and also stable for races and societies, we also know it, is ha it has risen and we don't know why exactly. Maybe it has something to do with how we eat. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the pollution in our environment. Maybe it has something to do with TVs and how we perceive information today. So we just know that on average, every 10 year, the, our intelligent raises with 3% in our society. So for example, if you measure Danish people in the 80s and then in the 90s, then the average intelligence will have risen uh, three IQ points. So that's um, something we call IQ, uh, Flynn effect, something we have known about for a very long time, also before Flynn. But he, um, he wrote some books about it too and made it uh, more popular. So yeah, why can it raise, why can it fall? Um, let's see. Let's see. Do we have it somewhere here? Oh yeah, they also say that Head Start programs, uh, for example, you have a Head Start program in the USA. I think they spent like half a trillion dollars on it so far. It has not worked. It has not, at least it has not improved intelligence. Maybe it can improve some other stuff, but it cannot improve your intelligence. Only in the short run. So programs can work in the short run when you're a child, but then they have no uh, effect on intelligence and your intelligence will always fall or raise to your to your regular uh, biological level yeah some good points some good points um 
this is some of the stuff that can actually influence intelligence. We don't know that much about it. Actually, we still don't know that much about it because you need huge groups uh, to find some effects here. But we know that lead in your environment, for example, in wallpaper, lead in wallpaper, or lead in, um, let's say you work with lead and stuff like that, that could actually, uh, that could actually diminish intelligence in a population. So if, if there's a city and there's a lot of lead in the city, then we can expect these children and the population to have a low IQ. That's very interesting. And then um, pregnant mothers drinking alcohol, that could also have some, some influence on IQ. We don't know that much about it, but today we are telling all pregnant mothers not to drink any doses of alcohol. Just avoid it all together. Because even these minuscule effects we have found is something that uh, you should really, really try to avoid. Even these lead effects, just avoid lead altogether. Don't even like, uh, don't put it in wallpapers because it's something that could have an influence. We're pretty sure it does have some influence. So um, with these things, for example, alcohol and lead, Maybe as a society we have uh, become better at avoiding lead and avoiding uh, and, and mothers have started to drink less alcohol when they are pregnant. Maybe this effect uh, led to the fl uh, Flynn effect. So maybe that's what uh, made our intelligence rate um, higher overall. Maybe, maybe something else. Maybe television as they say. Maybe something else. They're just guessing at this point. Maybe urbanization, television exposure, something else, uh, whatever. We don't know. Let's see. Oh, group differences. This is super, super, super controversial. Oh, sex differences is not that controversial. They just say that male have, um, while men and women um, have the same IQ because the tests are constructed so that both genders get the same scores. There are still some differences in uh, spatial ability and other kind of abilities. So, for example, men have a higher intelligence in spatial ability. They perform be much better on spatial tasks on average. So that's something you do to track uh, a moving object or move to space or track a moving object to space and stuff like that. Throwing stuff, um, hitting stuff, driving a car, it's something that um, you can use your special ability on, as they say here, throwing and, and aiming. Um, but then we also have women, and uh, women also have a higher ability, verbal ability on some tests. So um, again, that's, that's this difference, right? One gender is better at one thing, and the other gender is better at another thing on average. And also some brain differences. We know a lot more about it today as we have found a lot of modules and uh, areas in the brain that are different between the sexes. But even back then, you know that hormonal influences when you are, um, when, when a, a fetus and the hormonal influences on the fetus will predict a lot about how the fetus will develop. For example, high androgen Androgen level levels in, in the utero. They uh, kind of decide how the female will develop, and these kind of females they will play more with boy toys and less with girl, to uh, girl toys. So we know that this hormonal in effect on the fetuses is um, is something that changes brain structures. So a lot of androgen means that uh, the females will become more boy-like. We know a lot more about today. And also um, testosterone levels uh, correlate positively with uh, spatial ability. And negativity, negativity uh, uh, negatively with verbal, some verbal abilities. So again, that's something we again see this effect on this is spatial ability is something men on average are better at and where some of these men, uh, verbal abilities are something women are better at on average. And you can see that if you have high testosterone, testosterone levels, you again will have a better spatial ability on average. 
and a worse wearable ability in some areas. So again, we see these effects and we see that these hormonal levels can influence these kind of effects. And we know much more about it today. This is the controversial uh, chapter because this is about racial differences. Uh, for example, Lin says that the mean intelligence of the Japanese is 111. That's much higher than the white, right? Because the white people have an intelligence of about 100. And, um, but Flynn says that their intelligence is between 101 and 105. So still higher than white people, but not as high as some other scientists uh, predict. You just need to test huge groups to get the, the real result. And I think most results are about 105, a bit over 107 maybe in some cases. And also they, uh, they say that maybe uh, Japanese and Chinese, or at least they, uh, they seem to have higher spatial ability. So that's could, that could play a role in their higher MET level. So they have a higher MET level compared to white people, but even higher MET level that we can predict from IQ alone. So that could be because they have a better spatial ability too. I don't know. Could be right. Uh, again, they say here that mental scores of Hispanics lie between blacks and whites. Maybe Latin Americans was the wrong word, but whatever. It's called Hispanics in this article. Uh, black people, let's say what they say this. Oh, yeah. Black people have a mean intelligence as one standard deviation. That means 15 points below the whites. And then they uh, say, okay, maybe they're a bit critical um, about these test results, as people usually are. They say, maybe the tests are biases, biased. So, for example, maybe um, you need to know something about white culture to get a higher IQ on these tests. And what they say is that no, there's no such bias in the test because these tests also predict your grades later in life. They also predict your job status. They also predict your criminality level. Uh, they have a huge predictability power. And even today we can say that we know that they predict health, mental health, uh, physical health. So intelligence predicts all these things and it predicts it as well for black people as white people as well as Asian people and Hispanics so uh, we see there's no such uh, bias against black blacks maybe even there's a bias a bit in the opposite direction that white people actually get a lower sco score on IQ tests than they actually deserve so yeah no cultural bias at all uh, what they but they still try to explain it away um, and I have of course marked it for orange because you can try to explain something away but you need sources you need some uh, theories you need some science to prove uh, what you're saying and when they write something without sources that's a huge no-no in academic science um, but I, I do understand why they need to do it because it's a very very controversial subject and um, if I think if they don't try to disprove these biological effects on racial differences, um, they will just dig a grave for themselves. So yeah, but they do it without sources because they don't have any sources for this. The sense of belonging to a group with a distinctive culture, okay, stuff like that. They don't even have a book. They um, they use for this they just say okay maybe there's something where you belong to a typical culture uh, or belong to a group that makes your intelligent level lower than it actually is or something like that um, so yeah it's not really something that they they prove in any way but they write a lot about it again i understand why they did it but 21 years have passed since this date and we know a lot more about it and we know that now conclusively we know that 
the intelligent differences in the races is biological. So uh, yeah, that's why this article has dated a bit, but maybe it's still a good way to start off uh, your interest in this field. Um, and maybe it's a good way, to, maybe it's a good article to give to students because if you can ar avoid this area altogether, that's also fine. I mean, you can just know that, okay, black people have lower intelligence than white people and then don't go further into it because it's, it can be a dangerous area to go into. It's very, very controversial. There's still a lot of, of science to do in intelligence, even if you ignore the racial differences. Oh, what they say here, even you can have um, one cornfield with high tall cones and another cornfield with uh, low cones just because they have been fertilized differently. But also as they write in this uh, article, actually I kind of skipped it, with nutrition and stuff like that, that we kind of, we have a really, very hard time finding an effect because even if you have been starving, even as a fetus, if you have been starving for a few months, that does not predict your a higher, lower intelligence score. So unless you have grown up in an environment that have, oh, they say, they write about it here. Unless you have grown up in an environment where you have really, really lacked some food and really starved for a long time, uh, there, then we cannot find an effect. But if you really have starved and really have grown up in a terrible environment, very, very terrible environment, then that can have an influence on the IQ. Okay. So they say maybe nutrition is responsible for the Flynn effect that um, the intelligence or all in the society raises becomes uh, higher, but we don't know because we actually cannot find uh, uh, good results for this. We just know that a bit of starvation doesn't really affect intelligence. And that's also something we know uh, from other studies, actually, um, something they don't write about. But for example, there's a study with um, South Korean children adopted by uh, parents in USA, and they have been underweight when they were adopted. But when they became adult, their intelligence was higher than the white intelligence in USA, because that was just their genetic intelligence, and they they didn't they were not affected by um, by starving a bit as small babies but yeah i i do point out a lot of bad stuff for example let's see oh yeah there, there's some bad stuff in this article that's really bad for example they say that hey maybe environment can influence intelligence but maybe we don't know maybe it could yeah yeah of course it maybe it could yeah but find some results and then write about it they also um, bring in a study i don't actually know where it is black people um oh yeah for example in during world war war uh, second world war war second world war black people and white people from the military got children with some of these german women and then these children were tested and they had uh, the same average intelligence and in this article they use it to prove that there's no biological difference between black people and white people but that's of course a terrible study to even prove that at all in any kind of way because even to get into the army you need to pass an intelligence test right so you need a lot at least like 85 IQ points to get into the army unless you want to be a cook on a ship or some very very simple job because the army cannot use you if you have an intelligence of 80 so of course both these black men and white men would have to have passed this intelligence test so it's like testing uh, people at the university and then comparing races only at the university 
okay let's compare our white people and black people at the university that's that's a bad study you need to compare all people summary and conclusions um, there's not really a lot here there's a lot of uh, extra stuff so um, it's still very readable actually it's not that bad I mean they do uh, kind of they do mention a lot of stuff that they don't have any sources for and I marked it with um, with this orange writing so they just mentioned hey maybe that could be an environmental effect maybe we'd ha we would have another understanding of IQ or intelligence in the future and of course our understanding has not changed but they didn't know that so if they had to rewrite this article they would probably um, add a lot of stuff to it and uh, probably be a bit less critical of intelligence because we have many more studies to support uh, the concept of g-factor i hope i was not all over the place i think i think it's a decent introduction for people who uh, have not read this article or maybe have read it and need some extra thoughts on it and i have much more to say on it but i try to speak very fast because i know people don't have a lot of time right so yeah it's not the best article you can find on g-factor but it's not the worst either and if you're starting up in this field and if you just need a bit of information of uh, the concept of uh, intelligence and what we know about it and also what we don't know about it this is probably an article you, sh you should read uh, in any case but there are better articles out there too but at the um, overall they are, they are hard to find so there are some books on intelligence but a lot of them are written by people who have never studied the concept so they're just writing philosophical stuff so yeah read it but be critical